tragic. The story of Cinderella Egypt married to the king just became a baby-making machine. For the sake of inheritance, the end of her life is heartbreaking. For many women around the world, marrying a king is certainly something to dream about. Their ordinary lives can change completely like in a fairy tale. But this is not felt by the queen of Egypt named Safanaz Zulfika or who is also known as Queen Farida. Instead of happiness, she lived a tragic life as a member of the royal family. Quoted from the SW History YouTube channel, this woman who was born in Alexandria on September 5, 1921 must become a machine for making babies for the king of Egypt, namely Farouk. The love story of Safanaz and King Farouk began when the two met on a trip to London in 1937. At that time, Safanaz Zulfika was 15 years old. Different from Safanaz's simple life, King Farouk is known to be spoiled and always has a glamorous and extravagant lifestyle. Even though his people were starving, King Farouk didn't care and deliberately bought luxurious food. Not only that, he even bought a red car and forbade Egyptians to paint the cars the same color. Seeing the lifestyle of her son, the mother, the widow of Queen Nazli Sabri, to marry him to a commoner or upper middle class group. This marriage aims to eliminate the predicate, King of Wasteful, which has been attached to King Farouk. Ratu Nazli Sabri wants her daughter-in-law to be a beautiful, innocent, flexible, naive and kind-hearted woman. It turns out that all of those ideal types exist within Safanaz Zulfika. Until finally, King Farouk proposed to Safanaz at his 16th birthday party. Long story short, this young couple married at the Cuban Palace, Cairo on January 20, 1938, where they were only one year apart, King Farouk was 18 years old and Safanaz was just 17 years old. After marriage, the name Savanaz Zulfika officially changed to Farida, in accordance with the royal naming convention at the time. This name change was initiated by King Fuad I, where it was stated that every member of the royal family must have the same initials. But unlike her predecessors, Queen Farida did not live in exile. He even got public responsibility. Apart from being the queen, she is also the first lady who has been honored for public representation duties, such as attending charities, raising funds, and receiving foreign dignitaries. The wedding of King Farouk and Queen Farida is predicted to be a symbol for Egypt's modern image. The two are described as revolutionary, open, and the ideal couple of Egypt's elite, who undergo a monogamous marriage. But who would have thought that behind the luxury and important role she bears, Queen Farida is only a cover to achieve the goal of obtaining an heir. The problems in Queen Farida's life started because the first child she gave birth was not a boy, but a girl who was later named Princess Feriel Farouk. The birth of his daughter did not make King Farouk happy, but he felt his wife still had plenty of time to have a son. Not only that, Queen Farida also had to deal with the hatred of her own mother-in-law. This is because he considers Queen Farida not a woman who is easily controlled. Even the feud of the two queens has always been the most embarrassing public scandal in Egypt. On April 27, 1940, Queen Farida again gave birth to a baby girl named Princess Fawzia Farouk. This birth angered King Farouk. The reason is, there is a belief in Egypt that says a man cannot be called a male if he cannot produce male offspring. To get a boy, King Farouk consulted with doctors about fertility and followed various ways to increase virility. King Farouk was also willing to leave the strict diet he had been following and became very obsessed with stamina-boosting male food. Seeing her husband's condition out of control and obsessed with wanting to have a male child, Queen Farida reportedly had an affair with an Egyptian aristocrat named Wahid Yusri. This made his marriage worse. Queen Farida is getting away from all public activities. On the other hand, King Farouk started to collect many concubines without thinking about Queen Farida's feelings. Even the king even invited one of his concubines to attend an important event. King Farouk also dared to place a concubine beside Prime Minister Nukarashi Pasha to the point of offending him. 
King Farouk's household with Queen Farida became even more miserable after the birth of their second daughter. Even when Queen Farida became pregnant for the third time, King Farouk suspected that the child was not her flesh and blood. This is because King Farouk believed his wife was having an affair with a British painter named Simon Elwes. Exactly on December 15, 1943, Queen Farida gave birth again to a daughter who was named Princess Fadia Farouk. King Farouk was very emotional and accused Queen Farida of being physically unable to give him a son. Until finally, King Farouk filed for divorce from Queen Farida. King Farouk later took custody of his first and second children. Meanwhile, custody of the third daughter was given to Queen Farida because the king still doubted that the child was not his. After the divorce, Queen Farida gave up all her throne. This act was later declared the highest act of female emancipation that had ever occurred in the history of the Egyptian Empire. Queen Farida lived in Egypt until 1964, before finally deciding to settle in Lebanon. But there, she was finally able to meet her children after 10 years apart. Since officially divorced, Queen Farida has never again married or been in a relationship with anyone. He chose to focus on a career as a painter. Queen Farida even had time to hold private exhibitions in Europe to the United States. Queen Farida's life ended sadly and far from royal life. She died on October 16, 1988, after undergoing intensive treatment for hepatitis, pneumonia and leukemia. What do you guys think? Thank you for watching please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe this channel.